Well, hey, hi, Glenn here at the Gardens of Castle Rock. We are out in front of the Garden Suite, a project that I've been showing you a lot of videos, mainly about, you know, going up, building with these timbers and getting the roof on and doing things like that. Well, in this video, we're gonna go the other direction. We are gonna start looking down. We did the super, super cool uh, stone porch on here beautiful stone porch but what I want to show you is everything that it took to get to the point where we could put that stone on uh, very very cool all the way down to excavating putting in the footings doing the block work and just doing the whole project to get it to the point where we could do the stone uh, on this porch here. Hey, it'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, you'll get the next notification when we're doing a, a garden suite video or a landscaper know-how or just something pretty cool out here at the gardens. All right, little different format this time because we're gonna do a handful of still images taking you all the way back to the beginning of the project and getting right into the stone itself, how we put that down on top of the porch here. Um, gonna walk you through it. Let's take a look. Well, this project was begun in the fall after our last wedding. So it is November, and this is the third part of this complex. So the first part was the bathroom, the second was the timber frame up front. You catch a little view of it there. But we started with excavating out um, all the way down to the base level and then down to the bottom where the footings would go. A little bit of sand uh, brought in to bring everything up and level and uh, double rebar number fives all the way down at the base and then we poured a uh, nice good footing mix all right uh, covered it up at night in the fall we are starting to get a little bit of frost so not freezing yet but just getting frost in the fall uh, we were trying to beat the cold um, block work on top of the footing. So we squared up in the front part of the building itself, not so much the porch, but we did the building and got that nice and square. Then to the front of the building block, we started to put in the porch block, and that's what you can see there right now. The porch block went all the way across the front. We left the wall open so we could move some materials in uh, to build. What you'll see all the way um, on the building is we put a stone ledge or a brick ledge. So after the eight inch block wall um, for the main footing, we put a four inch block um, in place right there. You can kind of see it on the sides a little bit. I think the next picture you'll see it down the side there. Um, you'll also see the four corners. Uh, for the pillars up in front, so all of those will have the pillars. <clears throat> Started doing insulation. Uh, on the inside, we did two R10s. We have R20 on the inside and backfilling. Uh, waterproofing on the inside part of the building and on the outside of the porch. As I mentioned, we did eight inch block and then on top of that, we went with a six inch block because of the final elevation for uh, the top of block um, was too higher. So that went up. Time to backfill. Um, most of that after we finished the rest of the waterproofing. Um, doing everything from the backside, so coming in with the small skid and backfilling. And there, the porch is all there. You can see the corners where the stone pillars will go. You can see the doorway. And then you can see that, yes, the snow showed up finally. Um, so we had to build a little tent area, pump a little heat in there to finish the last little section of wall and get the waterproofing on. And we did accomplish that. Backfilled it with some delivered sand. Um, and it was time to start framing. So this part here, that was the idea is that we'd get the footings in uh, before things would freeze up and then we could build the main structure through the winter and that's what we did. We got all the framing done, uh, then uh, came the rafters and I think we took our winter break after we finished the rafters and not winter break but our holiday break and this is the picture that um, we headed home for the holidays and it 
was there. Next came um, just enclosing the whole uh, structure, the whole dressing room, and getting the roof on, getting the concrete floor on the inside, doing mechanical. So the whole winter just was solid working on the inside the building. Um, but yes, spring did arrive and we were able to get back at the porch itself. So frost wasn't out of the ground, but it was warm enough to start doing some concrete block work. So the stone pillars um, started in on the stone pillars and you can see where we built up off the corners where we had it there. There is the inside CMU. I'll link to a, a card or up on the top, there would be a card. There's a nice little video about building the stone pillars and another one about uh, putting the caps on the stone pillars. So capping out those windows were going in and uh, the frost was starting to go away, but not quite gone yet. So, but I was able to finish up the pillars themselves and just waiting for that frost to go. All right, frost is gone. Um, even though the, the concrete slab is going to be fully supported by all of the footings, I still like to pack everything. We hauled in a little bit of sand to get it all to the exact level. We did make a decision, um, wasn't to code, but we just added a piece of foam, a uh, two inch uh, foam on, underneath the concrete just to give it a little bit of insulating factor, help out a little bit. So the sand brought us up to a perfect elevation and um, for pouring the concrete. Concrete slab is next. You can see the four inch block right at the uh, foundation of the building. The concrete will be supported all the way around and you can kind of see now um, the insulation board covers the whole thing. There is um, some concrete mesh in there and then just it's framed up all the way around. So we're gonna have a three inch pour on top of everything. That's all that's needed in there. And that slab is fully supported because it core fills down into the, the footing blocks that are there. It gets to the blocks that are on the front of the building. That whole thing is supported and completely tied in. Um, and we did leave it with just kind of a real nice broom finish. We did have to use the building a little bit before the stone uh, was put on the, the, the porch itself um, and leaving a, a, a brush finish, a, kind of an untacky there, will make uh, a nice connection for the thin set that we used to set the stone. And there is, that's kind of just finishing up, um, trawling in that stone porch. That's Al, say hi to Al. All right, then after we finished the, the concrete, um, we got back to work on uh, putting, um, putting some of the finishing touches on the inside of the building, the doors went in, and then we did start in on timber framing. So um, you can kind of see how it all goes together there. One of the things we did decide to do is run the stone up underneath the brick that would be going on. That's, that's a check with your engineer, check with your architect what you want to do there. We decided to do that because it just as the water comes down, hits the stone, we didn't want to try to match that level or match that stone to stone. So we put it on top and carries the weight all the way down through. Timber work was completed. Um, now it is finally time for that stone to get in. Snap some lines to give ourselves a nice square grid, working with a one inch uh, dark called antique black, um, kind of a limestone uh, from Banna Stone out of Canada. All right, so we kind of just did a little talk about how the pattern, a random pattern, three piece, and that's how it would go in. We are using just a straight up thin set. I shouldn't say straight up because within the thin set, we did use a flexible polymer. It is outside, it is going to be covered. We are in Minnesota, so things are gonna freeze. It is not going to move very much, just the way that that concrete is all uh, supported and anchored into the footings. Um, but still good to have a little bit of flex in there. All right, so 
time lapse is always absolutely beautiful because it makes everything go so incredibly fast. Anyways, one piece at a time, not getting to their leveling, checking it in each direction. Um, I know we're gonna show you just a little bit of real time. Um, classic to any project as we were almost done. Uh, we had about three or four pieces left. Um, what started out as a beautiful day and an unforecasted rain shower uh, decided to show up. So we were able to get the last two pieces in, our last two more pieces in, left a few for the next day. Um, I think as we check our phones to see where the radar says it is and look up at the clouds, we decided to call it, got some poly and covered it all up. Um, my mistake, I didn't get back out there and set up the camera so I could show you exactly how we grouted, but we did just use a, again, like a standard grout and with a polymer, flex polymer in, mix that um, for the grout and that was done separately. If you've done tile, it's pretty much the same process. It's just that the tiles are a little bit bigger and heavier. That is unless you're laying porcelain tile right now, which seems to be pretty popular. Um, but the stone looked absolutely wonderful um, going in. Nice random pattern. And if you've been watching any of the other videos, you will know that uh, the stone that we used on uh, the porch here is actually the same uh, that was used in the hearth on the fireplace inside. So I'll link to that video. Hey, if you've done a project like this or anything like it, um, go ahead and leave a comment. We'd love to hear your thoughts on how we did it, hear how you would maybe do it different, um, and just share some of your experiences with putting in a stone porch like this. Um, I think next uh, video that we're going to be putting together is just that stone going on to um, the exterior and then going brick up from there. Nice little slab grabber to lift up and set those um, big slabs of stone. Um, at the end of the day, they, they keep getting heavier. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but they do. Uh, all measured out, I was doing cutting on the other side of the building. Uh, like I said, that was the last piece we got in before the rain went loose. So I think we had all of about four or five pieces to go. So all in all, I wanna say pretty simple. Um, check with your building officials, check with either your architect or your engineer exactly how much insulation you want underneath there, where do you need the waterproofing to get all of that stuff in place. But as you saw the whole process, the foundation went in, we built up, uh, we did pack underneath there. I would say not necessary because it's all supported. Um, there we go, there's our rain. The concrete went on a thin set to set the stone in place. And as I mentioned, I didn't get any pictures of us grouting, but I think you'll see some final pictures of the grouting in here. Um, and just working with that random pattern, you can kind of see what we did there. Those lines that we snapped down help keep it all square as we put it together. And it's only a six foot um, deep porch, so the random, only do so much with that but that is um, how we put the stone porch on the dressing suite really appreciate the time that you took to watch the video as I mentioned would love that to hear some comments from you and it would be great if you were to follow along and um, see there we go we're doing some of the stone and the brick on the building right now in the pictures that's coming next in the growing the gardens building the garden suite thanks so much for watching, I've been Glenn with the Gardens of Castle Rock.